Okay, this is uh, it's got a roll course bit on it. And a hollow core, about half the diameter of a pencil, goes up inside of here. And then when we get it screwed all the way into the tree, and we put this extractor inside, and it kind of jams in, it's cup shaped, and I'll pass this around so you can see it. And then you back it off, and that breaks off the core from where it's attached to the trunk of the tree. Then you just pull out the core sample, and there's a little piece of wood there. And you can pull it out, and it uh, sits in here like a tray. You can look at it and see that this uh, piece of wood that isn't here, uh, that we just extracted out of the center of the tree, uh, has all the rings. And we can we can get a picture of what a tree looks like inside just by just by using this tool. So. I don't believe any science. Okay, now if I wanted to know how old this particular tree is, I might say, um, like for example, I'll, I'll tell you a little story, and I'll pass this around and watch out that this thing doesn't fall on your foot. You're pretty easy to see. Check it out. And that doesn't damage the tree. Yeah, it damages the tree. Okay, so I'll pass this around. In 1989, we did a, a ceremony. Actually, it was a little bit later than that. But we started looking at trees for the 200th anniversary of the United States Constitution, the Bicentennial of the Constitution. And a few of you people might remember it. Uh, there was also a similar activity during uh, the 1976 Bicentennial of the Declaration of Independence. And we went around and we found trees that were 200 years old or alive at the time of the signing. This is part of the official living witness program that was originated out of Philadelphia. And we went around with this uh, instrument here. And for the people that would let us, uh, we drilled some trees uh, to verify how old they were. Uh, problem, the problem with making an injury through the bark of any tree is the decay of the tree. So the, uh, the benefit spreading the word about how valuable these trees are, uh, we felt outweighed the impact of growing coal in here. Isn't there a way of helping that? No. Unfortunately. Yes? We've got trees, but that's not going to reach the, the center of right. what you do for the rest of that. It's called statistical analysis. So what we do is we take a sample. Now, if you look at uh, a core and you find that the rings are about uh, 10 rings per inch, and if that tree is, is five feet in diameter, you've got a 200 year old tree on your hands. If the area that the core won't reach to in the center of the tree isn't that much different than the outside of the tree, if the tree is fairly consistent in its ring spacing. Um, does that make any sense? No, I don't know how you can get a small amount. That, that, that black metal bit that's hollow, I, I stuck one of those in a tree in Riverside Park and broke it off. It cost me 165 bucks. That's made out of this incredibly hard steel. It's uh, an extremely high carbon steel. So that's my new core. I have my old one sitting on the, on the shelf. Um, so it, it's, it's a precision instrument, and it's uh, very sharp. It's just like cutting a tree down and looking at the snow. But that, this is just taking, it looks like an arrow, a little bit thinner than, arrow, than an arrow about that long. And you can see everywhere. Now you have to position that thing so that it goes right at where you think the center of the tree is. And it's, uh, actually, I'm a commercial arborist. I, I deal with individual trees. And that tool is really designed for uh, rural foresters traditional foresters, and there's a lot of foresters that have drilled a lot more trees than I have. So uh, that tree, that tool is good for taking a sample of what a whole stand of trees looks like. And there's where uh, you can get away with making an injury in a tree because you're just injuring one tree when actually there's a whole, sample, whole stand of trees there. Uh, statistically, it's a pretty small impact. Uh, the age of trees is not something that's really important to us. Okay, there's a bunch of instances uh, of somebody saying that, uh, you know, in, in the year 1860, you know, this happened, and in 1865, the Civil War ended, and in 18, you know, whatever, something else happened. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I'm from
in Los Angeles. There's a place called Farmer's Market. They had a redwood slab there. And uh, there was little, little pins. So there's probably a lot of people that used to go by that slab. And we would just stand over that and we'd look at it and they go, you know, this is when, you know, Jesus was born and this is when, you know, the Greeks had their civilization. And this thing would go back probably about 3,000 years. Uh, and it, it had a bunch of historical instances marked on those rings. And by looking at the rings, you can get an exact of exactly how old that tree was at the time that it was cut down. Uh, they used a uh, dating system to date historic relics that predated the, the trees. Uh, they got started in uh, Arizona. They found pieces of charcoal from uh, Indian houses and structures that had burned down. They would take these pieces of charcoal they would dice them up, they would put them under the microscope, and they would see how far apart the rings were. And in some years, the rings are, uh, say a wet year, the rings are far apart because the tree grew a lot that year. In years of drought, the rings are very closely spaced. If there was a 10-year drought followed by three years of wet weather, you'd have 10 closely spaced rings followed by three coarsely spaced rings. And they would take these pieces of charcoal, they stuck them in a computer, all the records, and they had uh, pieces of wood that were, that were cut down and made into Indian structures 15, 20,000 years ago. Well, no, 15, 1,500 to, to 2,000 years ago. And by plugging those ring spacings uh, records in with trees that are still standing, that we knew how old they are this year, they were able to tie those together and make a continuous record going back several thousand years. This is a science called dendrochronology. Dendrochronologists verified the carbon dating, and carbon dating is a, is a, uh, a spectroscopic analysis that's used uh, for dating dinosaurs and things that went back way farther back than the record that we have of our trees. So the, uh, the, the ages of trees that were in Indian civilizations in New Mexico and Arizona provided the basis for us to be able to say how old uh, dinosaurs and and the age of the Earth and a lot of geologic formations are because it gave us a track record that showed that our radiocarbon data is accurate because it can go back three or four thousand years or more sometimes. So the uh, the age of trees is, is it's incredibly interesting. However, it's it's not really significant to us. The the relative age of the tree, all we know is that it's really old. Now, if you go in here and you're looking at uh, at Maryland's tree, tree number two, the Haynes Massacre <coughs> Apple Tree. Which you better give, give the story to uh, That tree was probably planted in the 1850s. Okay, right about the time that the Applegate Trail people came down here. We don't know how old the tree was at the time that, that the Indian Massacre happened in uh, 1855 or 1856. Do you know how old the trees were at that time? No, the, the counts on that tree are so varying. Every book that you find it in, uh, everybody's got a different story, which is human nature. Uh, I would imagine where it's just about after the massacre, if nobody is claiming it or, you know, just going through on those measures, it probably has to be what we do. Yeah. So, um, in, in, 18, in the 1830s, there was an apple tree planted in. <laughs> And that is officially recognized as the oldest tree in the Pacific Northwest, the 1830s. So now here we have one in the 1850s. Um, now we have a, a registry of Grants Pass's oldest trees. This is the, uh, the Courier article from July 29 to last year. And I'll um, pass this around so you can look at it. Uh, it announces the, the, when this brochure was released. And it also tells about our city limits tree registry. Now, I'm a member of the Grants Pass Urban Tree Advisory Committee, and the city has instituted this program to draw attention to heritage trees here in town. Okay. We have a, a printout, and pretty extensive, and you can get your name on this list, your, your tree, and it tells all about uh, a bunch of trees. Okay. And if you have more than one historic tree in, at your house, that's uh, within the city limits. You can get all of those trees that are significant registered. Uh, 
there's all different kinds of trees on here. There's willow trees, there's oak trees, there's uh, what? a whole bunch of them. Well, the, these, the criteria for qualification of your tree as a significant tree is pretty loose. If you feel that your tree is wonderful, call City Hall and we'll put your tree on the list. Okay, well, well, what we look at are, are three things. Okay, there's age, there's a, a rare type of tree or an unusually well adapted tree to this area, and there's the size of the tree. Okay, so if you have, uh, uh, well, let's let me just go down here. Let's say uh, this birch tree. It was only uh, in diameter, but these people, uh, uh, it was a European white birch. It's on. Uh, 1009 Northwest Washington. And it's probably not as, uh, as significant as the, uh, the sequoia tree right next to it on the same property. It has an upright uh, weeping uh, branch shape. And it says it might be the largest uh, grants past European white birch. So it's significant, not because it's huge, but because it's the biggest of its kind around. Start this off just a little bit. I have a lot of things here, and uh, things like that I need to get back. So don't walk away because you're on tape. Don't, don't, don't steal my resources. Like my Sand County Almanac, don't steal that. I can do a lot of studying up, so I can, I can talk to Frank and uh, Jack Ward Thomas on it. Uh, the apple tree. I guess everybody's seen, has, it, has anybody not seen the apple tree? Because we'd say, and you haven't seen that apple tree. Uh, okay, this apple tree is right across the railroad tracks from the post office in Marlin. Now, put on your hiking shoes if you're going to walk across the train tracks. Then you can go around the corner. You can go around the corner. And there's a big sign. There's a big sign if you're in your car. You can drive right up to the tree. No, no. We're trying to get that what we call it is a is a, a mollus uh, SPP period. SPP stands for species, and that means it's any kind of apple tree. Yeah, there's a lot of rotten apples. Now this apple tree was uh, listed in a book. Famous and historic trees. The American Forestry Association, prior to 1976, knew that the bicentennial of the Declaration of Independence was coming up, and so they sent the word out. If you have a historic tree, tell us about it. That apple tree made it into this book. It was published in 1976 for the American Forestry Association as a record of all America's heritage trees. Okay? Um, word got out, and most of the trees that are in this book are still around. Okay? When you attract attention to your tree, people tend to want to protect it. So if you can, attract attention to it. Maintain your tree. Take care of it. Prune it. Clean up after it. Cut the weeds around it. Make it accessible. And love it. And then other people will love it. They'll see you love your tree. Hug your tree. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the way you can... Get sensory awareness of your tree, not just visual awareness or 